Hello, I welcome you all in this course on refrigeration and air conditioning and today we will discuss different kind of AC systems. Say air, air conditioning has variety of applications <coughs> starting from half ton of refrigeration or 0.1 of 1 ton of refrigeration to 1000 uh, tons of refrigeration. So, for variety <laughs> when there is a variety in application same type of system cannot be used everywhere. We cannot use same type of system for 0.1 TR and 1000 TR. So, there are different systems <laughs> for different type of applications. Number two, <coughs> technology is also different. I mean nowadays there is a lot of stress on energy efficient system. So, over the years in air conditioning industry also <laughs> the industry has evolved. Uh, uh, energy efficient system because the saving in energy is, <coughs> uh, is is directly related with the saving in the running cost of the system. So, we will start with the small units of uh, air conditioning system that is a unitary system. So, unitary air conditioning system means <laughs> it is a self contained unit or a split unit. It comes in the form of mass manufacturing from the industries and these units for example, window air condition. Window air condition is <laughs> a self contained unit, it is a box and this box is fixed in any of the wall of the, of the room. This box has all the arrangement, I mean all compressor, compressor is hermetically sealed compressor. In hermetically sealed compressor, the compressor and the motor are housed in a single unit. In a hermetically sealed compressor, the motor and compressor are housed in a single unit and the wire connected to the motors are they only come out of the body of the compressor and the cooling of the motor coil is done with the help of refrigerant. So, this hermetically sealed compressor is used in uh, unitary systems and they have evaporator and they have condensers. For the movement of air, a fan is provided, a fan is provided and the a motor is provided in fact, it has two fans, one is pushing window in this side, one is pushing in the in this side that is uh, condenser side, here they are condenser coils, here they are evaporator coils <coughs> and th both the fans are mounted on the same motor. This unitary, this <laughs> unit, <laughs> unitary system can be fixed in any of the wall of the room. Now, precaution has to be taken that a proper slope of the unit has to be maintained, a slight slope, backward slope has to be given which is normally neglected by installation because <laughs> in this uh, uh, evaporator coil, the condensation of refrigerant will take place. If backward slope is not given, then, then the water will start draining on the wall of the room. This you must have witnessed in many of the applications. So, <laughs> in this type of system, a slight backward slope is given and the temperature of air which is at the grill is approximately 13 to 14 degree centigrade. I mean at this temp temperature air is supplied to the occupancy and occupancy temperature as I told you earlier it is approximately, it has to may be maintained around 25 degree centigrade temperature and 50 percent RH, 50 percent relative humidity. Now, another type of unit in a unitary system is a split type of system. Now, a split, here there is a split between high pressure side and the low pressure side. In a split system, in fact, there are two units. So, one unit is splitted in two units. In this unit, there is only expansion device and coil, evaporator coil and there is a fan also which blows air over evaporator coil. This is inside unit. This is room wall and outside this unit is connected with the outside unit and outside unit has compressor, 
uh, and condenser and it has got a separate fan. A separate fan is for outside unit and separate fan for inside unit. Now, the vapor from evaporator the cycle remains same. The vapor from evaporator goes to the compressor from compressor to condenser and condenser to expansion device and from expansion device to the evaporator. <laughs> now, this unit is a sort of silent type of unit because compressor is outside major source of noise in any air conditioning system is compressor. So, compressor is housed outside the building and uh, uh, inside the building there is only evaporator in the and a fan. So, <coughs> noise level is low in this in this type of system. Second thing is uh, precaution has to be taken the distance between these two must not be very large should not be any case more than 20 meters. If this distance is large definitely for the flow of fluid inside the pipe the pressure drop will take place and that will <laughs> affect the performance of the system. Now, these type of systems are suitable for example, window type of air conditioning system is suitable up to say 3 tons of refrigeration. Now, these type of estimate type of system we can go for higher capacity, but suppose I want to have 50 tons of refrigeration, 50 tons of refrigeration none of these units will work, single unit will work. <coughs> if you provide multiple unit that is another case, but single, single unit will not work for 50 tons of refrigeration. Now, for such type of uh, load 100 tons, 50 tons or 100 tons. Uh, central system is used. Now, unitary system a package type of unit is also used package type of unit I mean it is a larger size of window type of window AC where everything is put in a one package and it is placed at the rooftop. It is a direct expansion type of system direct expansion time is <laughs> after the expansion in the uh, Ex, uh, expansion wall that is 1, 2, 3 and 4, so in this unit after expansion in the wall the refrigerant goes to the evaporator and the air comes directly in contact with the evaporator this is known as direct expansion type of units there is no secondary refrigerant like chilled water or brine and this unit is placed at the rooftop and air is supplied to a room or, or a set of rooms through ducts and this type of unit is known as a package type of unit. Now, central system centrally AC system there is a compressor house mainly in the basement of the building there are two type of systems where is direct expansion type of system and chilled water type of system. In direct exp uh, uh, expansion system it is same the air which takes heat from the room goes to the evaporator coil gives heat to the refrigerant and it comes back and in chilled water type of uh, air conditioning system the the chilled water is produced in the evaporator coil in a separate tank the chilled water is produced and this chilled water is circulated throughout the building through uh, through a pump <coughs> the benefit of chilled water system is if you look at the heat carrying capacity of air and water suppose as you know that q is equal to m cp delta t Suppose, 1 kilowatt of heat has to be carried away by air for we have to find the mass of the air. So, mass of the air C p for air is 1.005 and delta t let us say um, uh, delta t is uh, uh, 25 degrees and 20 degrees centigrade right we can find the mass flow rate of the air and in the similar case suppose 1000 has to be carried away by the water 4.18 into let us say 20 again because specific heat of water is approximately 
four times the specific heat of air. So, mass of the water is automatically reduced by four times. Suppose here we need, suppose in, in, in a case we need uh, 1 kg of water, 1 kg per minute of water, then air will need only 4 kg per minute. That is one thing. Second thing is, if you look at the density, density of air is 1.2 at normal temperature pressure, that is 1.2 not normal temperature temperature STP, I mean at 25 degree centigrade, it is 1.2 kg per meter cube density of air. Now, density of water is approximately 1000 kg per meter cube. So, it is 7 or 800 times. So, now you can imagine <laughs> the amount of water, water is required to carry the heat which is equivalent to the heat carried away by the vapor. So, for very large systems <laughs> instead of using air, water is used for as, as a medium of heat transfer and water is water works as a as a secondary refrigerant. It takes heat from the room and then heat is discharged to the evaporator. <coughs> now, in some of the cases, in some of the cases mixing of these two be, is done that is also there. The mixing it, I mean part of the system is running with the air cold air and part of the system is working with uh, uh, cold water. Now, if you look at a typical fan coil unit which is used in a system, in a chilled water type of system. So, this is a unit and it has first of all a filter is provided. Filter are must in the circuit otherwise the contaminated air will enter the room and <coughs> this side there is a passage for fresh air and this side there is a damper for room air and this side is for fresh air. Now, fresh air enters from this side, room air means return air, return air which is coming from the room it will enter from this side, they will get mixed here and there is a coil arrangement here chilled water coils arrangement here, air is blown over these coils with the help of a fan or a blower and then it is supplied to the room. So, <laughs> this is a typical arrangement for fan coil unit. Which is used in uh, uh, air conditioning systems. Now, in addition to the fan coil units, this is all air system, I have already explained all water system, all water system the fan coil unit will be used. Now, third type of system is air water system. So, in this system we take benefit of both the systems, air systems and water systems and the cooling in the system is done with the help of air and water. Now, in this type of system, we take induced air from the room. So, induced air from the room that is return air from the room, it enters from this side and there is a fan coil arrangement. So, this air when it comes into the contact of chilled water circulated in this coil, uh, it uh, gives heat to the chilled water. Now, fresh air from AHU the air from air handling unit, air from air handling unit comes from this side and <coughs> there are dampers here. So, dampers helps in controlling the mixture how much uh, 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 fresh air shall be mixed with the return air with the room of the room and because <coughs> these air they pass through a nozzle, the nozzle is this is extension of this there is their nozzles and after mixing it is supplied here right. <coughs> uh, this mixed air is a mixture of a, the fresh air coming from the AHU and the air coming from the room. 
So, likewise, there can be many arrangements in uh, 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 central system. Now, third one is constant air volume system. Now, these unitary systems like uh, window AC, split AC, most of the system or earlier system, they were constant air volume systems. Constant air volume system means constant volume of air is discharged in the room. Right. So, the flow in the room is coming is constant. If you look at the data sheet of any split AC or a window type AC, the flow rate is fixed. Flow rate is fixed maybe 300 CFM, three, sorry, huh, just 300 CFM or 500 CFM, whatever the flow rate is, the flow rate is fixed. So, that is why they are called <coughs> constant <coughs> volume system. The constant volume system can be a single zone system. The single zone can be a single room or multiple room or even a floor. A floor can also be a single zone. Now, in different zones, different environmental conditions can be maintained. That is why a big building, normally in big buildings, zoning is done. right? And for each zone, zone normally for, for all air system, for each zone, there is a separate expansion device. Now, this is a terminal reheat system, this is very interesting. Suppose in a particular zone, we do not need very low temperatures. For example, in one room, uh, the temperature requirement is 21 degree centigrade. In another room, the temperature requirement is 26 degree centigrade. So, in a uh, uh, terminal reheat system, at the point of supply of air, mixing heating of air takes place. So, cold air may be entering from this side at 21 degree centigrade, but zone where 26 degree centigrade temperature is required, the heating of air is done. Heating of air is done and there is a heating coil. We can do the electrical heating, electrical heating can be done or heating with a steam, heating with hot water any mode of heating can be used and this temperature is increased to 26 degree centigrade. The terminate heating system is not a very efficient system. Definitely once on the one side we are cooling the outside air which is available at 40 degree centigrade to 21 degree centigrade and again we are heating it to 26 degree centigrade. So, this system is not very energy efficient system, but it is very flexible and easy to control. Because we have to simply use the heating, suppose electrical heating system is there. So, fine control can be done in such type of system. So, in terminal reheat type of system, the heating of air takes place at the supply terminal. The dual duct system, the dual duct systems are normally very popular in the industries where air supply and return both ducts are provided. One is supply duct, another is return duct. The velocity of air remains comparatively higher in these type of ducts. They are smaller in size and normally <laughs> when the velocity is high, pressure loss is also high in such type of ducts. And these ducts are also <coughs> uh, helpful. This type of arrangement, dual duct arrangement is also uh, useful in making the system uh, more efficient. <coughs> But this type of system, it may not be efficient, but it is, I mean, the terminal reheat type of system is, I mean, it is very flexible and workable system. So, dual duct system, there are two ducts. One is supply ducts, the air supply at a very high velocity and, uh, and then there is a return air. For example, a, suppose a worker in an industry is standing before a furnace. Furnace is at a high, very high temperature. So, we cannot uh, cool the entire environment. So, what is being done? Air is blown over the body of the worker and from the supply duct and it takes the U-turn and goes through the return duct and it is taken away. So, that area, that area gets, in fact, the, 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 the human occupant of that area gets the comfort cooling by the air, but the entire area is not cooled. So, dual duct system has many advantages like this. Multi-zoning in a building definitely in some part is 26 degrees required, some part 21 degrees required or different air conditions are required <laughs> at the condition of air is required in different part of the building. 
So, multi zoning is done and each zone is provided a separate expansion device to uh, attain the state of the air. Now, the fourth is variable air volume system VAV system. Variable air volume system means, so it is a sort of on off type of system. You must have observed in, in uh, window AC or split AC, it does not run continuously, it switches on and switches off. So, if thermostat is fixed, let us say at 25 degree centigrade, so when the temperature is 26 degree centigrade, it, sorry, yes 26 degree centigrade, it will switch on, I mean it depends upon the setting and when temperature reaches 24 degree centigrade, it will switch off. Flow rate will remain same. So, when 24 degree centigrade air is reached, temperature of air is reached, uh, the system will switch off, slowly the temperature will start rising, when it goes to 26 degree centigrade, system will again switch on. Now, in air conditioning motor, the starting current is very high, uh, starting current is approximately uh, 3 to 4 times the normal current. That is why uh, uh, 15 ampere uh, fitting is done for uh, window type of AC. Window type of AC suppose 1 kilowatt motor, 1 kilowatt means 1000 watts, 200, uh, 230 volts or let us say 250 volts. So, it is 4 ampere, right and 4 ampere because the starting current is high, 4 ampere normal uh, house domestic uh, electrical wiring is 5 ampere wiring, right. <laughs> but we do not use normal wiring, it is dedicated wiring is provided for uh, window type of AC, because starting current is 12 or 13 ampere, it is 3 times. So, starting current is high, that is why 15 ampere wiring is provided for window type of AC. So, we are talking about the variable <laughs> air volume system, where volume of the air <laughs> changes right and if when the temperature inside the space reaches the required temperature and we do not we no longer require cold air, the dampers starts closing, the dampers starts closing and the static pressure in the duct it, it increases. When there is a shoot in the static pressure of in the duct, it gives signal to the air handling unit and the supply of air in the room is reduced. So, variable uh, air volume system is, is an energy efficient system. Now, <laughs> air water induction system, fan coil unit with sep separate primary air, I have already uh, explained you this type of system. Now, the uh, this one VRF system, uh, this is important, I will take up this one VRF system. Now, VRF system is variable refrigeration, refrigerant flow system. So, instead of controlling air flow in the system, refrigerant of flow is in the, uh, in the system is controlled. Instead of uh, suppose in a, in a cycle as you know the pH diagram, So, the heat taken away by the refrigerant depends upon H1 minus H4 multiplied by mass flow rate. Now, if I vary this mass flow rate as per the load of the coil, I shall not ha have to <coughs> make any other arrangement. So, this type of arrangement where mass flow rate is varied according to the load on the coil is known as variable refrigerant flow system. So, it has many applications, offices, school, college, hospital, home, <coughs> retail store, multi tenant residential building, restaurants, hotels, data center. Now, in variable refrigerant flow system, scroll compressors are used. Scroll compressors are, but, but nothing, but they are spirals, there is one spiral and in the scroll system, there is compressor, there is another spiral, right. And one spiral uh, revolves, not rotate, revolves around another spiral. So, 
when they revolves around, around another spiral, a, the, the refrigerant, cold refrigerant entering from this side from the evaporator, it get compressed and it, it emerges here from at higher pressure. So, this compressor is used for uh, VRF system. Now, in this compressor, if I change the frequency, frequency of this revolution of one is six fixed spiral, suppose black one is a fixed spiral and this is the spiral which does the revolution around the, uh, the fixed spiral. So, if I uh, control the frequency of this moving spiral, I can control the mass flow rate also. So, this is this type of technology is known as uh, in inverter technology where with the help of frequency of moving spiral the refrigerant flow is controlled. Now, another uh, type of technology in this VRF system is uh, digital scroll type of technology where because <laughs> it has certain height also, the sp spiral has certain uh, depth also and that is and they are engaged with e each other to a certain depth one is fixed and another. If I change this overlapping, okay, if I change the distance between these two spirals, one, one spiral is fixed inside the another spiral. If I change the, uh, suppose this is fixed spiral, this is uh, moving spiral like this. So, if I change the, uh, uh, the overlapping of these two spirals, that can also be controlled for, that can also be used for controlling the mass flow rate through the system. So, nowadays <laughs> VRF technology, this is the latest technology, it is emerging fast and at the part load of, I mean up to 10 percent part load, I mean that is very high, 10 percent of the part load, it uh, uh, gives uh, uh, high, uh, the efficiency is maintained. So, if in the, those applications like hotels uh, where, I mean we do not know the load in the system this type of technology is very helpful. <laughs> uh, there is another type of cooling system which is totally environmentally safe that is steam jet cooling system. In steam jet cooling system water is used as a refrigerant and chilled water is uh, circulated in the evaporator. Now, the water cooling is done in a flash chamber and in flash chamber the vapor water is evaporated. In order to evaporate water, vacuum has to be created inside a flash chamber and for creating vacuum inside the flash chamber, a steam ejector is used. So, from a boiler, steam is supplied to the steam ejector. Inside the ejector, there is a nozzle which imparts very high velocity to the steam and this very high velocity of steam creates low pressure just in the vicinity of the neck of the nozzle and this neck of the nozzle is connected to the flash chamber. So, low pressure, very low pressure is uh, created inside the flash chamber and the water is evaporated. For the evaporation of water, heat is taken from the pool of water present inside the flash chamber and that causes cooling of water inside the, uh, water present inside the flash chamber. This water is circulated in the evaporator coils with the help of a pump and cooling water after uh, taking heat inside a, an evaporator, it is expanded in the expansion wall and it is sent back to the flash chamber. Now, there are several advantages of this system. First of all, it is flexible in operation. It has no moving part and it is vibrations free. It can be easily installed out, outdoors. Weight of the system per ton of refrigerating capacity is less system is reliable and maintenance cost is less and this system has does not have any uh, leakage hazard which may happen in the case of other refrigerants. So, this is a special type of system which is absolutely uh, environment safe, but the only issue with this system is it cannot be used for, uh, for the temperature where the temperature requirement is less than 0 degree centigrade. So, this is all for today and in the next lecture we will start with the human physiology.